Foreign Secretary. Well, we can talk now to UKIP leader Nigel Farage, who's in Strasbourg. And do you agree with Philip, Philip Hammond that the architecture for a deal is now there? Well, Philip Hammond, of course, was the man who, in the first weekend of June, said we needed fundamental treaty change. Now he's sort of talking some airy-fairy language about architecture for a deal. Look, you know, this package was hardly worth the wait. It's pathetic, really. Uh, there is no single power that comes back to the United Kingdom. Uh, there's no reduction on the bill we pay. There's no uh, possibility of controlling our borders. Uh, what we've got is a few cobbled together words that mean frankly nothing you know britain is not excluded from ever closer union uh, and every single every single time this parliament passes a vote on, on a piece of eu law actually that is what integration is all about and the deal on migrant benefits well um, it'll be a sliding scale for four years which will coincide with the minimum wage rising uh, to a living wage and I think the result of all of this is even more migrants will seek to come to Britain. Well, so now there I'm will... not convinced by it at all. Some reforms, uh, there will be an attempt to prevent non-EU migrants uh, abusing the differences between national and European laws to settle their families in Britain. There will be some insurance for the UK that members of the Euro won't gang up on us. There is a recognition, and this is important, that we are not on the path to ever closer union with the rest of the EU, which doesn't that pull the rug from under much of your argument? Well, well and we're not excluded from the path of ever closer union. It's written very carefully, but the point is this. Every single time a law is passed by these institutions, it centralizes power and it integrates the EU more deeply. I heard all this nonsense talk ten years ago when the French and Dutch rejected uh, the constitution in a referendum. We were told, no, 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 there'll be no more search for ever closer union. Well, of course, we know every day what this place does is to integrate. The fact is, what the British people want is they want the primacy of UK law, they want this organisation to cost us less money and they want back border controls and we have not got back border controls. And as for the red card, so if 15 parliaments, if a majority of the EU oppose an EU law, they might stop it becoming a law. Goodness me, it's hardly a British veto, is it? Do you accept that with the decision being made by the British public, there are still many questions that they have, that immigration no doubt is a factor. But can I put to you what Charlie Mullins, who's the Managing Director of Pimlico Plumbers, he's been saying about this uh, renegotiation package. He says, if you have your foot in the door to a market of 500 million potential customers, where 200,000 UK companies do business, employing more than 3 million people and creating 229 million pounds of income a year, why would you let that door close on you so you can beat it with your fist to, to try and get back in later? on. Isn't there a huge part of this debate where people want to hear from people like Charlie Mullins whose money, well, whose business depends, he says, on that European link? Well, we're hearing it, aren't we? We're getting it from the bosses of the big car manufacturers. We're getting it from companies all over the United Kingdom who are saying, look, whether we'd rather Britain stayed in the EU or not, if Britain chooses to leave, it will make no difference to our investments and our business that we're doing in the United Kingdom. Um, and Charlie Munners makes a point about access to the single market. Well, every country in the world has access to the single market. The question is, what are those terms of trade? And here's the real kicker. Only 15% of the entire British economy is exporting goods and services to European Union countries. Yet, as a member of that so-called single market, the regulations and laws and rules that come from it are applied to 100% of British companies, are applied to the 85% of the British economy that is not exports to the European Union. And what we're arguing for is a simple trade deal, not membership of a political union, which bounds us by a set of rules and prevents and forbids us from making our own trade deals around the rest of the world. I want Britain to have you know, market access to Europe and Europe to have market access to Britain, but I want us to be free to be a global player in our own right. The race has started, in effect, uh, from today. Lots of talk of June 23rd as a possible referendum date. Yeah. Does that worry you? Oh, well, I'd rather it was in 2017, because I think that there is no good news coming out of the European Union. It's perfectly clear uh, that the migrant crisis is threatening the Schengen zone uh, and causing deep distrust uh, between member states and, 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 and astonishment um, at the words that Angela Merkel uttered a few months ago. But look, you know, in life, 
you have to play with the, you know, the cards that you're dealt. And if it's June the 23rd, we will fight it on June the 23rd. This Prime Minister, in his Bloomberg speech, talked about a fundamental change in our relationship with the European Union. And he's being allowed, you know, the crumbs off the table to reduce migrant benefits for a short period of time. It doesn't cut. It doesn't wash. Those of us that believe that Britain should be self-governing, that Britain should control its borders, are going to vote for Britain to leave and have a totally different relationship. Nigel Farage, thank you very much for your time this afternoon. Thank you.